Hi everyone, this is Michael Olson from Stanford University Libraries, and this is a demo where I'm going to show how we've been able to install uh, one of the uh, applications which is existing on a CD-ROM uh, and pair it with a uh, working operating legacy operating system uh, and make it available via uh, emulation as a service. Uh, so this is what I'm going to be working on. This is uh, can see it it's actually a cd-rom from the international monetary fund um, it's government finance statistics uh, this particular disc is from december 2011 you can see uh, and it includes the jewel case and it also includes this little instruction and code book and i've already gone in and essentially have created an iso of this uh, and I've also taken photographs of the, uh, the disc and the associated media that comes with it. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to introduce you to our node and show you how I would install this uh, using our emulation node. So this is Stanford's node. Uh, we're currently running a um, beta from July of 2019. There was re a recent release in November 2019. Uh, we haven't done the upgrade yet. Uh, and also it's important to note that this is the old UI. Uh, the application uh, interface is going to completely change in 2020, uh, which is great. Uh, they're doing a great job on that. I've seen some mock-ups of, uh, of what uh, the development team is working on, and it looks really good. Uh, much, much improved. Uh, but for the time being, this is the old UI. Uh, so the first step that we're going to do is I actually need to import the ISO that I've already created. So I'm going to click on Objects here. And there's this import object. So the first trick here is to actually uh, import um, import the ISO. Uh, the first thing to give it a name. Uh, as you can see, I've done this a few times, so I should remember what it is. And I'm going to specify that it's an ISO, and I'm going to... So what I've done is I've actually gone to, there's this addition where you can add files that you want to upload, and I've added uh, the ISO here. So I've given it a name, no spaces, uh, define the media type as ISO, and I'm going to import. So I'm actually on a wired connection, uh, which really helps when you're, when you're working with, uh, with loading media into uh, the emulation node uh, or objects or disk images. Uh, so uh, keep that in mind. It's, uh, you don't want to really do it over a wireless connection um, unless you're just doing some configuration work. Um, but here we go. Uh, we're loading into the environment. And we're about 40%. The other thing I'm trying to really show with these uh, with these videos is uh, I think it's useful to keep in mind that there is uh, these gaps in the work um, where we're waiting for either a particularly large file to upload over the uh, the connection or we're waiting for an emulation environment to spin up and start. So uh, I'm leaving the video running uh, for the time being just because I think it's useful, uh, useful information to see how it actually works. So we're almost there. We just hit 90%. And give it one more second here. Almost there. 
Okay, so it looks like our object is loaded. Let's see if we can find it. Uh, yes, this looks like this is the object that I just put in there. So here you can see the object that I've just imported into the uh, into the system. Um, there's this little uh, choose uh, an option button uh, over here, and I'm going to click details. <clears throat> Um, so this is where I'm actually going to specify that for this particular example, it is software. And uh, I'm going to save that. And this is going to move the object we just created into the most recent software tab. Make sure I'm going to the right thing. There we are. So this is our object, it is software. And what I'm going to do is I am actually going to uh, assign an environment. And I already know which one I want. Um, and this is our Windows XP Professional with Adobe Acrobat Reader 9.3. I happen to know that this particular um, uh, install uh, will require Adobe Acrobat Reader. Uh, so this particular configuration is perfect. And I also want to thank, these are the Yale-provided uh, uh, emulation environments that we're, that we're looking at right now and using. Um, we're hoping to be able to uh, create our own environments based on our own base operating systems and load those into the network. But uh, thank you, uh, Yale University Library. Uh, emulation is a service team for, uh, for letting us uh, use these environments. This is the real power of the system. So I'm going to click Add, and now what I want to do is I want to boot up um, this particular ISO in this environment and see if we can install the software. So I'm going to click Run, and I'm going to pause the video for just a second because uh, this tends to take three to four minutes uh, the first time we boot up, and uh, and I just want to make sure that uh, um, you're not spending too much time watching uh, spinning wheels. So let's let this progress a little bit further and, uh, and then we will uh, come right back. Hi everyone, so it looks like Windows XP is almost up and running here. Just give it another quick second. Okay, super. So we have our environment is booted up, and let's see if we can find our install disk. Uh, it's really important to note that once you um, once you click in the emulated environment, uh, your cursor is stuck in there until you press escape. So um, I'm going to go to my computer. And there we go. So we can actually see that what happened here is the, um, this is the object that I uploaded here and it has mounted it as a virtual CD-ROM. Um, the key thing here is that what I wanna do is I now wanna install this application on, um, on this emulated environment. So I'm gonna explore the disk. And I've done this before, so there's actually two setup applications, and sometimes there, there's a couple, and it launches the wrong one, but this is the one I want. So this is just a question of me actually going through the old install process on this old environment. So now the install is actually occurring. So I'm going to give this a minute. Uh, 
And of course, oh, well, that was fast. That worked well. Let's just give it a second to finish the install. There we go. So now what I'm going to do is it looks like an install the shortcut on the desktop for the, this is that GFS browser. So let's open this up and make sure it runs. Everything looks good so far. Yep, it looks like everything's here. So the next step is once we actually complete the install, we want to safely shut down the environment, just like a regular um, you would do with a regular computer. Um, we need to make sure that we shut it down properly. So I'm going to turn this off. I'll give it a second to stop. <laughs> this disappears um, you can actually see that down here in this menu down in this uh, bottom left here I'm going to click save environment it's just going to give me a warning that make sure I wanted to safely shut it down before I do this and now it's going to give me a chance to name this environment so let's see this is small always happens with this. Three. So I'm just giving it something that makes sense here. And now we're going to click save. So what this is going to do is this is going to save as this, this is going to be the name of this is going to be what's an object, what's called an object environment. So it's going to be named this. Um, when we get into production, we'll we'll have to figure out if this is really what we want to name it. But that's a conversation for another time with the librarians. Uh, and I've given it a little, just a brief description over what I've done. And I'm going to click save. So let's give it a minute. Okay, now I'm going to go navigate to environments and object environments, and here we are. This is the environment I just created. So now when I boot it up, it should launch and everything should run uh, the way it just did. So I've successfully installed uh, this on um, this particular application on this version of uh, XP and I've saved it, saved it as a new object. So thanks everyone for your attention. Um, I hope that was illustrative. A um, couple quick caveats as you're seeing um, when you're working like this it's better to work in a wired environment. Um, as you can see it takes a little bit of time. You're gonna have to be patient um, but uh, success. So thanks everyone and uh, more as we progress with our easy uh, node work. Thanks. Take care.